From Nebraska's trusted news source, this is Channel 8 News at 5. Coming up tonight, thousands of shoes are being donated to the People City Mission. Plus, the hot topic of abortion fires up debate from state lawmakers, but first from the Capitol. So we have to change the structure of our system, and we've been talking about it, we've been studying it for the last eight years that I've been here. A final decision is made on prison reform in Nebraska. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us. Overcrowding, not enough resources. It's been a hot topic. And today, senators made a final decision on a criminal justice reform bill for this year. Channel East Macy Meyer has more on the attempt to get the bill through in our top story tonight. Macy. Senators were working hard to find a way to reduce prison overcrowding, but today those efforts failed. Senator Steve Lathrop said the failure of LB 920 came down to partisan disagreements. Even a last stitch amendment from the opposite side of the aisle couldn't get the bill passed. So now I'm going to now I'm going to ask you to do something. If you can vote yes on cloture, uh, no on the bracket, no on the Geist, adopt the Judiciary Committee amendment and move 920 to select. I will sit down with Senator Geist. It was in the final moments on the floor for debate for LB 920 when Senator Steve Lathrop threw out a last ditch plea for senators to meet him halfway on the bill so something could come to fruition. But Lathrop couldn't get the 30 votes to invoke cloture and send the bill forward. The motion to invoke cloture does not succeed. The prison reform bill has been a hot topic among senators and Governor Ricketts. There is a reason why LB 920 without AM 2337 is opposed by law enforcement, the attorney general's office, and our county attorneys. Those people tasked with ensuring community safety because those four items I outlined, along with the 60% rule, are non-starters because they compromise community safety. Slama said things like letting drug dealers go without mandatory minimums and incentivizing smash and grab robberies were just a few of the issues plaguing the bill. Senator Suzanne Geist tried to meet Lathrop halfway by putting forth an amendment that included around 80% of the original bill. On taking care of our citizens in a way that we have not done in the past. There's a huge gap in our system when it comes to treatment, both for addiction and mental health. Some said the amendment still didn't do enough to address the underlying issue of prison overcrowding. We've heard a lot of people get up on the floor and say, we need more, we need more rehabilitation funding. We need more problem solving courts. We need more diversion programs. I think we can all agree on that. We can all agree on that. But Senator Geist's amendment doesn't get us there. With the cloture vote not passing today, that means the bill is officially dead for this session. If it reappears next year or a similar one is presented next year is yet to be determined. All right, Macy Meyer with our top story tonight. Thank you, Macy. And happening now, state lawmakers are talking about a controversial abortion ban bill. If passed, the proposal would ban all abortions in Nebraska except for some medical exemptions and also call for criminal penalties for doctors who perform abortions. This is a trigger bill, which means it will only become law if the U.S. Supreme Court overturns Roe v. Wade. Nebraska is one of 13 states to adopt similar le legislation. Now to an update on that apartment fire that displaced four people early yesterday. Investigators say the cause was an improperly disposed cigarette on the deck above the second floor balcony. This all happened near 56 at Van Dorn. There was smoke damage that uh, did occur to four apartments. Damage is estimated to be around five to $10,000. Well, a restaurant in Malcolm is still cleaning up after a disgruntled former employee flooded it over the weekend. The Lancaster County Sheriff's Office says 27-year-old Nathaniel Barb quit as a manager at Genoa Food Company Saturday night. They say he then plugged all of the sinks, turned the water on, locked the doors, and left. The next morning, the restaurant had about four inches of standing water. LSO says the company only had a couple hundred dollars in damage, but they are still checking for mold within the walls. Over the past 11 years, Cornhusker Bank has collected more than 200,000 shoes from hundreds of collection sites. And all of those go to People City Mission for those in need. Around 20,000 get donated every year. and. You would think that that would last quite a while, but actually within about a month, they're all given away. 
The Cornhusker Bank says uh, the Lincoln community is very generous and people here care about those in need. For more information, you can click on this story on our website, klkntv.com. And uh, speaking of helping people, an update on a story we told you last week. Exec executive Travel is raising money to make sure Ukraine refugees have a roof over their head when they get to Poland. And so far, the fundraiser has been a huge success. And in the last seven days, we raised just shy of $150,000. Yes, in just a week. That is incredible. Executive Travel and Heartland Bible Church started something called Operation Safe Harbor Ukraine. The money raised helps pay for hotel rooms for refugees in Poland, which run about 50 bucks a night. It's also providing food and much needed medical supplies. They had six inches of snow just last week and uh, with cold weather. One third of all the people we house have medical conditions because of the cold weather and everything. So we're dealing as much with cough syrup and all the things that kids have. Executive Travel and Operation Safe Harbor Ukraine is still asking for donations so they, they can provide aid to more refugees. They're also in need of a wide array of volunteers willing to be sent to Poland to help with the efforts. Coming up at 6 o'clock, we'll have more on this mission and how you can help if you wish to do so. Today, Ukrainian forces claim they're uncovering more atrocities committed at the hands of Russian troops. And Ukrainian officials and the Red Cross are desperately trying to evacuate citizens. ABC's Aika Dachi has the latest on the situation there in Ukraine. Today, new brutal images coming out of Ukraine. The Ukrainian governor of the Donetsk region releasing these new photos, which he says show an attack on a school. Ukrainian officials say the building was acting as a humanitarian aid center. And in Bucha, the British Ministry of Defense confirming bodies of Ukrainian civilians were on the ground for at least 10 days before Russian troops who controlled the area left the city. And today, a sign of support from the Pope kissing a Ukrainian flag from Bucha. A 53-year-old man telling ABC's James Longman Russian forces made all the men go outside and check their papers. Anyone under 50 was shot dead. His friends were killed in front of his eyes. You're 53. So you made it by three years. In the port city of Mariupol, which has been shelled repeatedly by the Russians, about 160,000 residents are still trapped in the city without electricity, communications, medicine, heat or water. The Russian military is not allowing humanitarian aid convoys into the city. But the Red Cross saying it did transport 500 civilians to Zaporizhia, who fled Mariupol on their own. The UN now says close to 1,500 Ukrainian civilians have been killed, with almost 2,200 others wounded. The White House will levy new sanctions against Russia that will further isolate the Russian economy, making it more difficult for Russian President Vladimir Putin to fund his war. It'll ban all new investments in Russia, increase sanctions on major Russian financial institutions, and target government officials and their family members. Russia wanted to take Ukraine's capital city, Kiev, and topple its democracy and elected government. Today, Kiev still stands, and that government still presides. This fight is far from over. And we're now learning the U.S. will send another $100 million in Javelin anti-tank missiles to Ukraine. Now, this latest delivery means the U.S. has sent more than $1.7 billion in security assistance to Ukraine since Russia invaded the country. Ike Jachi, ABC News, Washington. Time now for a look at our weather here back home. And uh, John, we've seen a little bit of rain today out of all those clouds that have been covering us. That's right. Uh, we've had some very fast passing showers. At times you may hear the rain falling outside and about three minutes later it is gone because that's what we've been seeing as we've gone throughout the afternoon. Live look right now looking off to the north and east from Southeast Community College showing you all the clouds that are locked in. Uh, and we've got some moisture underneath those clouds as well. Now notice they're starting to quickly erode. So I think really our chances for rain for the rest of this evening are quickly diminishing. I'll keep a chance for some rain in the forecast up through right around 7 o'clock. After that, the rain comes to an end. But, and again, not a lot of rain either. In fact, none of the airports have had any measurable rain so far today. The other big story, of course, are the winds. We've had a peak wind gust today in Lincoln of 48 miles per hour. We've had gusts to 59 miles per hour out in Hastings. As of this hour, they're not as strong as they have been throughout the, earlier in the day. 30 to 45 mile per hour winds around the state, or I should say around southeast Nebraska. And for the rest of this evening, notice we'll notice the winds dipping as we go through the 
the overnight hours, but we still may have some occasional gusts to uh, 30 miles per hour, but the winds really start to crank up tomorrow uh, as the wind machine really kicks up to high. Temperature wise, we're sitting at 46 degrees in Lincoln. It's 46 in Beatrice and 46 degrees in York. For the rest of this evening, expect cloudy skies. 47 degrees at 6 o'clock and 8 o'clock and 44 by 10. Again, the winds are going to be a big deal for tomorrow, and we may even see a few snowflakes as well. We'll take a closer look at that coming up in my Storm Alert Team forecast. A little bit of everything. That's right. All right, thank you, John. Well, announced today, a popular country star is going to be performing this summer at the Nebraska State Fair. Tonight is bottoms up. Throw it all down. Rock this quiet little country town. Brantley Gilbert is going to be performing on Thursday, September 1st. The concert will be at 7.30 p.m. at the Anderson Sports Field. Tickets go on sale at 2 p.m. this Friday, April 8th. General admission will cost you $46. Coming up, the latest in health news. That's right, including the FDA's latest recommendations on COVID booster shots. We'll be right back. Don't miss the Hot Tub and Swim Spa Blowout Expo this weekend at the Lancaster... U.S. vaccine experts meeting today to discuss booster shots ahead of the fall. It comes as the new Omicron variant continues to spread across the country, and experts are going over strategies to fight future waves and variants. And the White House is ramping up efforts to respond to long COVID. ABC's Morgan Norwood has more. While many Americans look to move on with their lives after more than two years of the COVID-19 pandemic, an independent panel of vaccine experts meeting today to discuss staying ahead of the virus, any potential coming waves, and who may need another dose going forward and when. We should expect a lot of evolution going forward, and we should have methods to uh, keep up with this evolution in terms of our vaccination platform. 
month. It comes as the highly contagious Omicron subvariant BA2 is now the dominant COVID-19 strain in the U.S., with 10 states and Washington, D.C. reporting upticks in hospital admissions by more than 10 percent in the past week. This variant is more infectious than the original Omicron variant. And then you have more people socializing, so you have more chances of spreading the virus between people. So the more of that that happens, I think you'll see more cases. The White House calling on Congress to clear the way for more COVID funding, including money for global response. In an effort to confront the pandemic's lasting shadow, President Joe Biden ordering a new national research push on long COVID, directing federal agencies to support patients dealing with what can be debilitating symptoms. If we receive additional financial support, for it from Congress, we will launch new centers of excellence in communities across the country to provide high quality care to individuals experiencing long COVID and to get best practices out there to physicians across the country. In Shanghai, millions under lockdown due to surging Omicron numbers. The city asking all 26 million residents to take another round of COVID tests. And that expert panel won't make any decisions today, but their advice could shape the government's approach for years to come. I'm Morgan Norwood, ABC News, Los Angeles. And in other health news tonight, April is Autism Acceptance Month. According to the CDC, approximately one in 44 children in the U.S. is diagnosed with Autism Spectrum Disorder, or ASD. ASD begins at a young age and can last throughout a person's life. The CDC says ASD is a, quote, developmental disability caused by the differences in the brain, and it can be a genetic difference, but other causes aren't yet known. People with ASD may act and interact, communicate, and learn differently. Different does not have to mean bad. Um, people with autism are different um, in many ways from other people, um, but certainly not in all ways. And I think the key is um, different, not less. Walton says there's a tendency for people to talk down to a person with autism or speak to their caregiver instead of the person, but she says that there needs to be an awareness of that and says you should treat people with autism the way you would treat anyone else. No. Your Storm Alert Team forecast with Chief Meteorologist John DeSauer. A cool, blustery day, all thanks to this area of low pressure. Last night at this time, it was sitting in western Minnesota. It is very slowly moving off to the east as it continues to wrap up upon itself. Now we've had the cold front from yesterday that, that passed through. Another one cold passed through today, bringing us a shot of some cooler air. There's a spoke of energy that's coming around on the back side of this that will bring another shot of some colder air our way uh, through the day tomorrow. We've had a few scattered showers around the area. Consider yourself lucky if you had the rain and what rain we had only lasted for just a few minutes and then quickly moved off to the south and southeast. Right now on radar, you can see not a whole lot going on. In fact, as we take you into the single site radars in both uh, just west of Omaha and also down to the south of Grand, uh, of uh, Hastings, there's not a whole lot of precipitation out there. I think probably as we go, we'll keep a chance for a, a sh light shower in the forecast for about another hour or so, and then the rain should come to an end for everybody for today. Not a lot in the rain gauges. Uh, consider yourself lucky if you had some. None of the airports received any, but you can see the little blops on the screen, and that's just where the radar is estimating rainfall has fallen today, but it's all right around a trace of an inch of uh, tra trace of rain, and that's about it. Winds continue to gust out of the northwest. We've had gusts as high as 60 miles per hour this afternoon out into Hall County, a 48 mile per hour gust in Lincoln. We've got gusts as of this hour to 39 in Beatrice, 44 mile per hour gusts in both Aurora as well as in Hastings. And look back into the western part of the state where winds today have gust as high as uh, the low 70s. We had a 72 mile per hour gust out towards the Panhandle this afternoon. Now, winds are going to be an issue for not so much tonight, but through the day tomorrow as they are going to crank up even higher than what they did today. Here we are starting at 6 o'clock and notice what the winds will be like. Now, they are going to start to weaken as we go overnight. I think in the Lincoln area, we're probably talking some gusts to 30 overnight, so they're not going to be terribly bad. But it's tomorrow morning, you're going to notice the wind starting to pick up. By 5 a.m., we've got gusts to 25 to 40 miles per hour, but computer models are suggesting some stronger winds coming down our way by 8 o'clock in the morning. So if you're traveling along I-80, 
expect a strong crosswind, either uh, from the left or from the right, depending on which direction you're going. But we're talking winds gusting upwards of 55, 60 miles per hour in some locations. By noon, winds are still gusting 40 to 50 miles per hour. And I think as we head through the afternoon, we can still see some winds in excess of 50 miles per hour, not out of the question. And sustained winds will be very strong through the day tomorrow. And even into tomorrow evening, we should keep the winds around. It's on Friday we're going to notice the winds beginning to decrease, and it shouldn't be as much of an issue. It's 46 degrees right now in Lincoln, 47 in Beatrice, and 48 degrees in York. Uh, wind chills are into the 30s across portions of the area. Overnight lows will drop down into the 30s. For tomorrow, what sunshine we see early on, we'll see coming back in for the afternoon. And like today, we'll see some afternoon warming of the atmosphere, and that's when we'll start to spark some showers. And it's not out of the question, we could even have a few snowflakes mixed in, because temperatures will be colder a few thousand feet above the ground. That would support that, but I nothing accumulating. For the most part, I think we're talking to some scattered showers and temperatures tomorrow will be struggling to get out of the low 40s in Lincoln. Seven day forecast turns a little warmer on Friday. 54 will keep going up from there. Now a cold start Saturday morning down to 26 degrees, 65 degrees Saturday afternoon. Still looking for temperatures in the 70s by Sunday and then by Monday we've made some adjustments to the temperature forecast for early next week as an area of low pressure appears to be on the south side of us as opposed to the north side. So it'll be a little bit cooler, but there will be a chance for some scattered showers, maybe some stronger thunderstorms perhaps by next Wednesday and get this. We may even notice the humidity outside. You may get to hear me say at some point next week, Muggly as well, because dew points look to be into the 60s. His Muggly is going to make word. a comeback, isn't That's it? Right. All right, thank you, John. A negative day on Wall Street, the Dow dropping 145 points, NASDAQ also down about 315. Here are your numbers. You're watching Channel 8, Nebraska's trusted news source. Tonight, after the powerful.
Finally tonight, some unusual animal behavior caught on camera on Capitol Hill. A fox captured and killed after it, it attacks six people, including a congressman. And researchers accidentally spot a squid camouflaging itself in just released rare video. Britt Conway, who has a great name, has more in tonight's Take a Look at This. Fox on the run, a feisty fox roaming Capitol Hill has finally been captured after it bit several people, including a congressman. Someone comes and yells, hey, there's a fox attacking that guy. She tried to outfox animal control workers, but after chasing her for several hours, they finally caught her on Capitol grounds. California Representative Ami Barra was one of six people who said the fox bit him. He was nipped on the leg on his way into work. Felt like a small dog and I jumped really quick and I was holding my umbrella because I thought I'd have to shoot away and it's like that's not a dog, that's a fox. Capitol Police say there could be more than one fox den near the hill. Now feast your eyes on this colorful, accidental discovery. Just released video shows squid changing color to camouflage itself from predators for the first time. Japanese researchers say it's pretty common for octopi and cuttlefish, but no one has seen a squid do it. Researchers were apparently cleaning a tank when they caught the squid in action. When this species of oval squid were against the clean tank, they appeared to match the lighter background. But when the squid moved over to the algae, they appeared to turn darker. I'm not squidding you. For Take a Look at This, I'm Britt Conway. Neat. Fox and squid. There hey, you go. we aim to please. A little bit of everything. A little bit of everything, and that includes in the weather, right? That's right. Yeah, we've had a little bit of everything today. Uh, it's been a little bit cooler. We've had a lot of wind around. Winds gusting to near 50 miles per hour today in the capital city, and we've had some showers passing through as well. Winds are beginning to back off a little bit, and I think we'll see winds gusting at times to 30 miles per hour as we go through the overnight hours, so don't be surprised to see those numbers dipping just a bit. But tomorrow morning, we'll start to notice the winds increasing again as we could have gust 50 miles per hour or higher, especially through the morning morning and early afternoon. For the rest of this evening, we'll see uh, windy conditions still 47 degrees at 6, 47 by 8, and 44 degrees by 10. All right, thank you, John, and thank you all for being here with us tonight. World News is next. We'll see you back here for more news, weather, and sports at 6. With the Channel 8 Eyewitness News mobile app, you'll be the first to know. Get alerts about breaking news and weather, all in the palm of your hand. Seafood is back at Amigos. Everyone gets their favorites, even my picky eaters. And I don't have to cook. But the Baja fish tacos belong to mama. Closed captioning on.